Mm. Ouch. That hurt. Be a big boy on the camera. Today we're checking out the Ampere Time Server Rack Lithium Iron Phosphate Battery. It is joining a massive market of other companies that are building these types of batteries. Now typically Ampere Time is a budget model with their 12 volt batteries. They have great prices, but not so much with their server rack battery. Typically the standard capacity of 48 volts or 51.2 volts nominal for lithium iron phosphate is 100 amp hours for this size of server rack battery, but theirs is only 90 amp hours and it costs $1,699 so you're getting less battery for more money. Next other server rack batteries on the market have communication ports, they have a screen, state of charge indicator, lots of cool features on the front. This one is bare bones. We have a positive terminal, a negative terminal, and a circuit breaker. And unfortunately, this is not a DC rated circuit breaker. That's a big bummer. And it's rated for only 100 amps. So I'm gonna take a wild guess and assume that it's around 80 amps of continuous discharge rate, but let's check the manual. They should have it printed on the front, to be honest, just like the other batteries nowadays. And the manual claims max continuous charge and discharge current is 90 amps. Max discharge current for five seconds is 200 amps, which is pretty typical given the capacity. And this looks like an Ampere Time manual. They all look pretty much the same. I do like their graphics. It does look better than other companies. Oh no. They're using a voltage chart to determine the state of charge of this battery in the manual. See, even with the cheap budget EG4 that's cheaper than this and has more capacity, it still has a state of charge indicator on the front of the box. But this one doesn't. They want you to use the voltage, which is horribly inaccurate. Also, they do not recommend more than four packs in parallel, and that might be due to the interrupt current of this non-DC rated circuit breaker, but I don't know. That's just strange. They have some very strange strange wiring configurations for these batteries, which I would not recommend. They want you to connect it to a bus bar and then all the batteries to each other to avoid current sharing issues. Now this just seems like a bad idea. Think about how many conductors on the second and third battery, there's three conductors leaving each pack from each terminal. You'd be better off buying a server rack that has a bus bar that's integrated like an EG4 system. Yeah, that's strange. Anyways, let's open it up and test it out. These don't even feel like the screws that are used in other server rack batteries. And this case looks different too. I also just looked at my other server rack batteries and none of them have these terminals. These are very special. Most of the other server rack batteries are carbon copies of each other at times. So this is manufactured in a different place. Still China, but yeah, another building. Oh God, it smells like an Ampere time. I hate that smell so much. There's probably foam and glue or something in here. Look at this bar. Why is it so bent? And this foam is just hanging out in here. Oh, look at this cable management. This is awful. They glued, no way. This is a high temperature switch, just like their cheaper model batteries. Does this not even have a temperature sensor? I do not see one. This is probably the worst build quality server rack battery we've had on the channel so far. This is atrocious compared to what we're used to. The main connections are nice. These are hydraulically crimped and it's protected from the circuit breaker. But this terminal is like bent and these packs aren't even lined up. There is no low temp sensor. It's just like a small Ampere time battery, but in a server rack box. This cable management just makes me angry. Just zip ties? You guys could have put them on the sides or something else. And the BMS looks like the same BMS they use on their other models, but this is a 48 volt model instead. From what I can tell, the connections are pretty solid. I can't get them on that one. They need to change the whole design of this thing. I'm not gonna use this in my system because the quality is so low. So let's actually take it apart down to the cells. Yeah, this is the only temperature sensor for the whole pack. All the other ones on the market have five or six temperature sensors. And this is only for high temperature protection, not for low temperature protection. This is triggered at 75 degrees Celsius. And we've tested these multiple times on the channel. I wonder if these are even 90 amp hour cells. They look like they should be 100 amp hour cells. I can't believe they sent this out. They're connecting the two packs in series with this wire. Also notice how much room there is for these cells to move back and forth. 
Guys, this steel bar was from shipping damage. These cells must have taken a really big impact, and that's why the sides, these screws, are indented. It's actually pulling it together, which shows that the packaging is at fault. They didn't put enough foam around the box or something. Oh boy, do not short out the terminals. Now there's a sticker on each cell that shows 92 amp hours. These were tested. The last time we saw a sticker like this was on a used cell pack recently. Um, it's pretty strange because I've never seen that before on other Ampere Time batteries. And nowhere on the barcode or the cell does it say the capacity or the original capacity. And if I tested it, I would probably get the same numbers as stated on here because the other battery that we tested, we got the same numbers, which is very strange. These look like 100 amp hour cells just given their volumetric or density, their size. But there's no way for me to actually test that or no. Besides just a basic capacity test, which would give me the same figures as this. Same with these ones, 92 amp hours. It's nice that they tested them, but it, it's very fishy. It's weird. Why are there Sharpie marks on these and like these stickers? I've not seen this on other Ampere Time batteries. Now this steel bar that bent, there's two of them. How is that even possible? The battery must have been dropped or something because I don't see how else that would be possible. Yeah, I'm not a fan. No cold charging protection, bad packaging or shipping or something happened there. The cells, they have this sticker on here. They were tested and that's good, but why isn't it 100 amp hours? The cable management was the worst that I've seen in the industry yet. It needs a DC rated circuit breaker. <laughs> and I was expecting better from this company. Even their most recent internally heated 12 volt battery had a pretty good build quality and everything worked. Why did you guys build it like this? Did you guys not look at the competition and think for even five minutes before you even design this? Thing? Is this like a new engineer that hasn't worked on these before or something? I just, I don't understand. With all that said, I cannot recommend this battery. Um, you should look elsewhere. There are lots of great server rack batteries for cheaper and with more features and with more capacity and with better build quality and everything you could possibly need. But it's not here, unfortunately. Anyways, thank you so much for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye.